Hey, welcome back. My name is Dino. This video is on Marsha McLuhan and the idea of the medium is the message with respect to ed tech, educational technology. So what is the importance of this video and the medium is the message for educational technology? The big frame is that ed tech is changing our lives and more specifically our educational lives. Like it would be hard to say in most of the world that uh, technology in some format or another within learning spaces is, is being impacting, is impacting how we learn, both in schools, in our bricks, at homes, throughout our lives. And I like just the frame of a medium, because if we think of ed tech as a medium, we can think of it as a system. So say you think of medium as a system. And this ed tech system is something that we use if we're learning. It's also something that we exist within, like there's an educational technology space that if you're learning, you're existing within it. And it's also a means of communicating and interacting with each other. So it's really all around us when we learn these days. Like it's hard to not think of people definitely in the in like high school and the sec, po, like po, post-secondary level, like in colleges and universities not having some form of technology used. And you could even say, you know, depending on the school, even K-8. So let's think of some of the major traits for the idea of the medium is a message. The three main ones we'll be talk, talking about, just in sort of a short overview, are the ideas of scale the idea of psychic and social consequences and the idea of pace or pattern. And we're gonna talk about those three in that, that one, two, three um, numbered way. So number one is scale. Here's a quote from uh, McLuhan. The personal and social consequences of any medium result from the new scale as introduced into our affairs by each extension of ourselves or technology. I'm gonna sort of give an example of what I mean by these things, and uh, according to McLuhan, and then that example will make this somewhat opaque definition for those of you not communications or media theorists, get a, a vibe for it. For those of you who drive a car, even a bicycle, I guess, if you got into a fender bender, a accident, if you will, and you got into it with a gentleman here, I, have, I write he here, you might say, he hit me. And when you say that, I'm sure you've heard people say that like on a, on a TV show or in a film or just some, somewhere on the street when you heard a collision. They don't, when they say hit me, they usually don't mean that the actual other car hit them physically on their body. Like unfortunately, sometimes that does happen. But for the most part, most uh, um, collisions in, in, a, in a city are usually just car on car. And so what is this extension of ourselves or extension of technology is the car, when you use it frequently, it becomes part of our human being. It extends ourselves. And when someone hits our car, they hit ourselves. So you think about this as the technology becomes embodied. You become embodied in technology and kind of vice, uh, uh, vice versa. So as I sort of said earlier on, and then this is like when I talk about the medium is the message, in terms of educational technology, we increasingly learn via technology. You know, there's PowerPoints, decks, there's, there's um, you know, slides that we watch in front of, like for a lecture, we're using laptops, tablets, Kindles to learn. And as a result, due to these extensions of ourselves into everywhere, like just recently, this is being recorded a couple, like about a week after the big snowstorm in New York City, when there, there was a big fiasco about going back to online learning for a day. So as a result, back in the old days, when there's a big snowstorm, what would happen? Hey, snow day, everyone just, all teachers, uh, uh, faculty, staff, and students just go home and play in the snow and do nothing. Now, because of the ability to learn anywhere, goodbye snow days. So the scale has changed. Second one is the psychic and social consequences. Again, here's the opaque quote that I'll try to unpack. What we are considering are the psychic and social consequences of the designs or patterns as they amplify or accelerate existing processes. Hmm, a bit opaque, hmm, friend? Let me give you an example. This is a picture of a New York City subway. You can see there on the left of the picture, so something, something like I think it says, like, welcome back, New York. I think I, I, think I shot this during, the, uh, during COVID. 
Um, when you con- contrast and compare, and I've talked to people in New York, I've talked to people in, well, more people in L.A. that came to New York, they would have the car life more, specifically in L.A., more of a subway-based life in New York. And then what you'd find, and my thesis would be, that people are sort of more in, like, they're in the car by themselves in L.A., so you're a bit more distant from people. While in, in, in New York, you might not really talk to everyone on the subway. I'm sure most of you don't. Or those of you in cities where you have a subway. But you kind of interact. You have to kind of interact just a little bit more. You know, you squeeze in together. You hold the doors are open for each other. You run from each other late at night when it gets scary. <laughs> but you interact. And so just basically because these technologies are the way they are, you're going to interact differently with people. And so correspondingly, that also impacts ed- educational technology. More specifically, device-mediated learning becomes indispensable. Again, it's it would be difficult in uh, twenty in uh, today to go to. A, and again, I'm just going to give an example because it's probably the best example. But I'm sure this happens at, at, at uh, you know, especially high school, like the grades nine to twelve. But definitely, at most post-secondary institutions, if you're a full-time student taking three, four, five classes. You know, and if they're all face to face, you're at the very least going to have someone doing a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, you're most likely during a, a lecture are going to be asked to, you know, go online to do some research or go online to access a, a content management system, a CMS, or to do something that involves a, a tech, uh, some kind of device. And if you don't have it, they'll ask you to, use, to do it with a, a, a classmate. Uh, again, as a result, Device media learning is indispensable and it's almost impossible these days to not have one, not have a device that's connected to the internet. And finally, pacer pattern. Again, opaque pat- opaque um, um, quotation first and the unpacking. For the message of any medium or technology is the scale or pace or pattern that it introduces into human affairs. For example, you see this, for those of you who can tell, and I, I apologize, like, I, I like the picture's quite beautiful, but it, can, it might be a little bit hard to see. Basically, what it is below is a baseball game, not a super huge one. Like, like it's you know, it's not major leagues, but you know, there's, there's people there. And as you know, by the the colors of the light, it's a night game. Before you had, and and, and I apologize, I actually cut them out to fit all, all the text in. There are some light fixtures there, and basically, what it's saying is that with the the advent of lighting in grand ways, you can have things like night games. You can change the scale and the pace and the pattern of a major sporting event and the people that patronize it through technology. So before, when it was dark, you would not have baseball games super light because you just couldn't see them. Now you can have them, you know, any time of the day. And in educational technology, I'm taking, I'm making a joke based on the, uh, um, the for those of you who have seen uh, uh, David Mamet's um, Glen Gary, Glen Ross, there's an iconic scene where that's ABC, always be closing. And that is for educational technology, always be learning. Because the scale and pace and pattern of technology, which is, you know, 24 seven, you know, as long as you have a, a Wi-Fi signal, a device and some electricity, you can learn at any time of the day. And I find for myself as a person who, who teaches all the time, I could always be marking or preparing because as long as I have a, a laptop, some energy and Wi-Fi signal, you know, someone sent, uh, sending something to be graded, I could, I could read something online, I could prepare some media like this one, like this video. From all this impact, impacts of educational technology as a medium, first it requires a device connection to the uh, Wi-Fi participation via that device and equity. You need to be, which leads to equity issues. Um, or, uh, you have to be able to avoid the device connection, etc. There are multiple ways and directions of communication as a result, it's going to be disorienting because just like think about this, you could be watching a TV show and you could tweet about it. You could be joining a face group, a live uh, um, um, community to talk about it. You could do a little TikTok, taking a bit of the show and you dancing to a song from it, et cetera, et cetera. And it can be a bit disorienting because it's so much. Number three, transcends transcend space and time. It can be immediate or, or and or asynchronous. Again, potentially disorienting. You can create your own schedule for learning very easily these days, especially for asynchronous classes. You can include all media, TV, radios, photos, etc. As a result, and, and like any type of medium, like an educational technology, can include you know this is a video that could be used in a class. You can use a podcast, which would be radio. You know, you can use fo- photos, which I peppered out through throughout this presentation. So it can appeal to multiple intelligences, which is great, and you know. Um, you can you can do that and you can learn from that. 
Number five, uh, um, because of educational technologies, medium, and you know the internet more generally, we have a tendency to shorten communication. We now use texting. We now use images to convey things like through memes. We also have emoji, emojis. And because of the ambiguous nature of a really short piece of text, a really weird image, and you know emojis that aren't, don't always make sense to everyone, you can have more ambiguous communication these days, which can muck up educational technology. Number six, um, because of all this technology, it fosters more online and, and, and less offline communication. As a result, you gotta, you gotta think about this, this these days. Back when I went to college, um, we would have face-to-face -face meetings for group assignments. I'm sure the number of people that do that these days is way lower. I'm sure any time a group is meeting, it's mainly online. Um, so this is kind of uh, uh, number seven um, revolves around a couple of things that already been said. There's been a greater tendency towards decontextualized communication because, again, it's shorter. You're using more ambiguous forms of communication. As a result, there's greater misunderstanding. It's often more emotional and, and less rational than it might be. And finally, this helps to create questions about what is high-quality education in t uh, today. And this goes to something that happened during the pandemic when people are like, why am I paying all this high uh, tuition rates when I'm getting my classes via Zoom? Is educational technology and online learning the equivalent to offline? You know, that's something that we're going to be wrestling with in perpetuity from now on, as long as we have education. Well, you're welcome to get that, that eternal question to ponder, friends. That was Medium is the message for educational technology. My name is Dino. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to like this video. Please feel free to comment on it. Uh, what did you think about those different traits? Uh, has, has educational technology and the medium of educational technology um, changed the, the pace at which you learn, the pattern at which you learn, and the scale at which you learn? Do you agree with uh, McLuhan or do you disagree? Do you have any thoughts about how educational technology is changing the way that you're learning? Is it making it better? Is it making it worse? How? Please feel free to share. And then finally, if you like this type of video, please feel free to subscribe to this channel for similar types of content. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.